We have Cage Titans President Mike Pulvera here after Cage Titans 62. Mike, right after the event, what do you think of the fights? Ah, uh, man, there's some amazing, amazing fights. I mean, honestly, like, I said it a little earlier. Like, I've been doing this since 2010. We started Cage Titans. We've done 63 of 63, 4, 5, whatever the hell the number it is. And it's like every time you think you've seen it all, like, something new happens. And it's just, it's just amazing. I mean... There's, there's always something new when you think you've seen it all. That's all I can keep saying. It's like, I thought I'd seen it all, and then here we are, and like JoJo wins the main event with like a <laughs> jumping shovel kick. We had the main event get canceled in the back room with a temperature. It's, like, it, it's just insane, man. This sport is amazing. As much as I love it, I hate it at the same time. So we had a lot of stars drop out in the coming weeks. So we had Hassan Graham drop out. We had Jack Honnan drop out. We had Cleveland McLean drop out hours ago. Is that disheartening to you at any point? I mean, I, I just think that, um, you know, I, I don't like to, like, boast, but I just think it goes back to, like, you know, what we put into this. Like, realistically, like, I know what each one of those guys went through, so I bust my ass nonstop to try to keep these cards together. And, uh, you know, it sucks, and as excited as I am about the fights that happened tonight, you know, I definitely am thinking about the guys who didn't get to perform because we couldn't get those fights to come together. Um, but I think it also shows the strength of this card. I mean, today, um, the last card of the year locally here in New England, it's like this card was stacked. Like, you, you know, you talked about those guys that we didn't have on the card, but then you look out and it's like you have Jerry Mew, 6-0 undefeated guy. You have Casey Norton, undefeated Joe Poria fight. And it's like the card was just stacked with so many stars. Like, even though we took a couple hits, the, the, the card was just so deep. It was, it was, I had a lot of people telling me that this might have been the best card we've done in, you know, 10, 12 years. And I know you don't get to see a lot of the fights because just running around like a chicken with their head cut off. <laughs> but is there any fight that really surprised you? Or any performance that really surprised you? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you're right. I, my mind just is spinning in so many different directions. I mean... I, I didn't see many of the fights, but that, that, that jump, jump shovel kick that Joe threw was kind of like when I ran in here and actually yeah. we were together. I was like, what happened? What happened? And you're like, I don't know. And I'm like, let's watch the replay. Um, that was pretty crazy. Um, I think that, I mean, Casey Norton's performance is pretty uh, impressive. You know, he took on Joe Poria, um, who was undefeated and, you know, just signed with Top Game Management. And it looked like he was going to be with a win here tonight. He might get signed to the UFC. And, and Casey just kind of steals all that thunder. Uh, and that was a pretty impressive performance. And uh, how about Earthquake Terrell? Like, man, this this kid is just dynamite. No one puts away Sam Watford like he does, and uh, he came out and showed. I think that a lot of guys, we, we talk about it a lot with Cage Titans, like we don't fight on paper. Like that doesn't tell the story. And a lot of, you know, Fairweather fans will just look at records and decide if they, they look forward to a fight. You look at uh, Earthquake 3 and 4 fighting a guy who's 4 and 6, and people are like, eh, you know, why should I care about that? I'm telling you right now, Aaron Chassel has what it takes to go to the next level. Took some, you know, mismanaged fights in his early career, but that kid has, has it all. He really does. So, yeah, those are some performances that I liked. So, with the main event getting dropped, Casey Hold Norton. On, i got to cut you off. I almost forgot because this night's been so crazy. How about Ryan Torrance? You know, this oh, guy, absolutely. You know, he's a Plymouth police officer. He started with us. I'm telling you right now, as a, as, as a promoter, matchmaker with Kate Shines, I can't tell you how many people grab me. And just like, I'm going to do this one day. I'm going to fight. I want to do this. You actually said it to me earlier. <laughs> and I'm still waiting. I don't, I, and people say it to me all the time. Uh, over at Coops, when, you know, people come up to me all the time. They know about Cage Titans uh, at the restaurant. And they'll say, oh, I'm going to fight one day. And I'm like, yeah, tomorrow when you're not drunk, come <laughs> talk to me. And no one ever hits me up. But Ryan Torrance, you know, he said in the cage, 2018 he's been doing this detail. And he always would grab me and be like, I'm going to fight one day. And I'm like, okay, sure. And he's a cop, so I'm just kind of playing nice. And then here he is. Like, I got word a couple of months ago that he was going to fight, and uh, that performance was amazing by him. And, uh, you know, that, so that was another one I almost forgot about. So now you can go back to the question. <laughs> I asked you this two hours ago, but let's see if this answer has changed. With the vacant flyweight title being dropped, Keith Norman with the amazing performance, what's the future of the Cage Titans flyweight title going to be? Man, I mean, who knows? I mean, Mitch is already in my ear, like, asking, like, who's in it? Who, who's up for January? Who's up for January? Like, I'll beat up Cleveland. I'll beat up this guy. I'll knock this guy out. Like, you know, Mitch was, you know, this kid, since he was, like, 10, 11, 12 years old, he had aspirations to be in the UFC. He's stopped his entire life and put his focus on this. And a lot of guys do that, but, like, you don't hear about it at such a young age. And, and I, I might be wrong, but Chael Sonnen always says it best. Don't look at facts. 
get in the way of good story. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that Mitch Raposo dropped out of high school to pursue becoming a UFC fighter, which is insane. Um, but anyways, he had so much success at, what, 22? He made yeah. it to the UFC. He was on The Ultimate Fighter. He was on Dana White's Contender Series. Um, you know, and, and, and he has such tremendous upside. He just wants to fight anybody and everybody. So I guess to answer the question long-windedly, um, you know, he was supposed to originally fight Justin Valentin. We announced, um, you know, that fight was put together. That was supposed to happen tonight. And Justin Valentin was uh, hurt with a knee injury. Um, so that's why. And Mitch was like, I'm not waiting until January. I want, I, want to beat any, I want to beat anybody up, which is my original point. Uh, so that's why we put this fight together with Cleveland. Mm -hmm. So um, come full circle, it looks like Justin Valentin uh, will be who we have for January. And Mitch said if his knee's still not ready um, – he said he, his words, not mine. He goes, I'll beat up Casey Norton, too. I'll pack <laughs> that kid up. Uh, there's no shortage of opponents. I was trying to get Johnny Cupcakes over here in the cage. I said, hey, listen, Mitch's opponent just pulled out I, uh, hours ago. I said, you got your shorts in the car. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't think he's going to make 25 anymore. But, hey, that would be a fun fight, too. But, yeah, Justin Valentin looks like he'll be up next. And we just talked to Joe Giannelli. He said he would most likely vacate the welterweight title, go back after that lightweight title. Who would you want? to make that vacant welterweight title again. You want Condon and Casey or someone else? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, uh, listen, I, I mean, Dana White says it best. I don't make fights, like, really at a press conference. But, you know, there were some talks, and, and sometimes when you get too far ahead of yourself, like, things fall out. Jack's definitely out until at least March. You know, his, his pretty serious injury. If you saw him in the crowd, he was on crutches. I think he was in a boot or a cast or something. Uh, I, think, I don't know what he said, but. I'm not going to tell you what his injury was, but if you saw him, you, you, you'll, you'll know. Um, so he's definitely out for a few more months. Um, so we'll see. I mean, who, who knows? I mean, Aaron Charles' performance tonight, I mean, how do you deny someone like him if he wanted the shot at the welterweight title? That would be vacated. Um, you know, Joe Giannetti, he says today he wants to focus on the lightweight title, but as you see, things change in a blink of an eye in the sport. Yep. So, you know, if a name that's exciting for him, he might jump in there and, and – and, he said he already vacated it, and then here he is fighting for it again. So you never know, but there you go. Two more questions. So today's Veterans Day. You guys aren't veterans. You got a bunch of veterans fighter, veteran fighters. Is there any message you want to give to any veterans watching as well? Uh, man, listen, I mean, obviously, thanks, you know, for you guys. Because of you, that's what we're here. You know, I'll be able to do what we do. So obviously, salute to the troops and, and all the, the veterans out there. I mean, Jerry Muse is, is the one that's at the forefront, um, but Eric Medina is also uh, an Army veteran, um, and, and Ryan Torrance is an, a Navy veteran. Um, and, and fun fact, Jerry is actually an Army veteran, and he already did a stint in the Navy, so he's, he's a double military vet. Uh, so, you know, obviously, without that, you know, and he had a heartwarming speech. So yeah. um, if, if, if you're looking words of me, I don't think I could top what Jerry said to the vets. And, and uh, so go watch that one. And the question to everyone's mind, when's the next Cage Titans? Oh, man, Cage Titans, uh, we have all the dates for next year. Uh, January 27th is the next one. Like I said uh, earlier, the only thing I'm looking forward to, my son in the Super Bowl tomorrow, uh, Plymouth North. Uh, so I'll be bright and early, 8 a.m. tomorrow. So hopefully he wins the Super Bowl. That's first and foremost. Then I'll get some sleep. And then I'll start thinking about January 27th. But just for you, Andrew Mack, I got a good fight for you. We're going to drop news right now. You heard of the BMF title in the UFC. And Cage Titans is going to bring the old motherfucker belt. He's doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> so Greg Jones, undefeated Greg Jones as an amateur and pro, 49 years young, undefeated pro. He will be taking on Brian Costco at 46 years old, who's a 2 and one uh, professional. We're going to have a little bit of fun on it, and they'll be fighting for the OG <laughs> MF uh, January 27th. So there's a little fun one. You're the first to hear it. Awesome. Congratulations on an awesome event as always. Thank you, my man. Have a good one.